What up guys, it is Justice here and welcome to a guide for the Acheron Mammoths, the new high level mobs to be introduced into the game and the final high level mobs to be introduced into the game for now anyway. These are a brand new Slayer creature which you can find on the Mammoth Iceberg, very original, <laughs> but on the Mammoth Iceberg in the north of Fremenic. If you teleport to the Fremenic Lodestone you can just run north, jump on a ship, uh, sail over there and yeah. You're there, the Mammoth Iceberg. It's a beautiful place, great environment, graphically it looks incredible. And the Mammoths are huge. So this video is going to be a full in-depth guide for all the knowledge that I know so far on first day of release. Now there's going to be a lot of info here, I'm going to try and get it all condensed into a small video or as small as I possibly can. You're looking at 10 minutes max, so let's do this. Okay, let's speed through the gear and invent because no one really cares that much about that. We want to get into the mechanics, but we'll look at the gear straight away. So a power slay gear, again, I'm going to separate this similar to my Camel Warriors, I think I did. Uh, we're going to have a power, power slay gear to really rip through those slayer tasks, those people who have a lot of money who can really afford to go OP with their setup. Then you've got the safe and casual setup again, which I'll probably use most of the time if you're just chilling out on a slayer task or if you want to grind out multiple kills. So the power slay gear, we've got... Full power gear, that's tier 90 malevolent. We've got Drygore Rapiers because they're weak to stab. We've got Zealots, which is good because the damage output can go up to 18%. But the prayer drain is just huge. So you do need to balance that with the Penance Aura or just take more restores. Or you can take an Amulet of Souls or let's say a Brawler's Blood Necklace because at the end of the day, you might feel that prayer drain just is too much. I personally do. I'm just saying this is the best power slay method, I guess, which you could deal the most damage with. Ring of Death, uh, or if you don't want to use Penance and use an Amulet of Souls, let's say, you want to be using maybe the Supreme Brawler Aura, which gives 10% accuracy, it's a brand new aura in the game, it is brilliant here. You then want a Vampirism Scrimshaw. Now, you're going to want a Blood Nihil for the extra accuracy as well throughout the fight, or a Steel Titan. Uh, but yeah, I'd recommend a Blood Nihil here, and that does mean you're going to be hitting every single hit, and you're going to be dealing a huge amount of damage due to your power gear. Again, if you are using a Nihil, then you can easily substitute a Brawler's Aura for a Vampirism Aura, which also gives you extra heals there. So, the uh, more safer option, I guess, is exactly the same as above. A Amulet Souls or a Brawler's Blood Necklace. Um, the Amulet Souls is good here, though, because you do get extra heals from when you're Soul Split switching, which I'll move on to. And the extra protection from range hits when you're praying range is nice if you don't want to move out of the way. Uh, now, with this method, instead of taking a aggressive combat familiar, you will take a legendary pet with either a pack yak attached to it or a pack mammoth and you will use this to pick up the drops for you so you can still be efficient and of course that means you're going to be taking 30 items of food or 32 with the pack mammoth inventory is on the screen pretty standard the only real thing to notify within this invent is that i've got weapon poison which is re really nice a shield switch if you want a resonance heal off range hits later on in the fight and that is pretty much it and dreadnips do work here so you can use those as well Okay, three minutes in, let's get on to the actual attacks of the Mammoths. We're going to have a look at the attacks first, then we're going to walk through a strategy of overcoming those attacks. So, auto attack hits with melee, they are weak to melee as well, more specifically stab, which is why I'm using Drygore Rapiers and I've swapped my longswords out for these. There are four main special attacks, the first one is their range attack where the mammoth trunk will curl up and throw icebergs at you. You can either choose to dodge this, or you can pray range uh, to tank half the damage, or you can pray range and devo and, and tank the full damage, or use debilitate and half that damage even more. They also have a charge ability. Uh, you can either dodge the charge ability, or just concentrate on DPSing and pray melee, and you'll be fine. Again, you could devo this as well. They have a sever attack, where they actually use that ability on you. It will use this ability, and it'll knock off your prayer for around 3-5 to five seconds from what I could tell. This can be deadly if it barges at the same time, which it has happened to me once, so be careful of that. I have yet to work out whether this is random, or whether you can stop it. I've tested with stuns, bleeds, and all sorts of stuff. Have yet to... I think it is just random though, to be honest. Same with the charge ability as well. Uh, fourth and final attack, which, you'd, which you should never see unless you are using low level gear, is Pulverize. Once it's Adrenaline Bar, which you'll see the yellow bar charges up to 100%, it will use Pulverize on you. I actually tested this out on stream. It didn't even hit me. It actually splashed on me, but it did inflict the, the passive effects that Pulverize has on you, 
whereby your damage output, your damage dealt towards the mammoth will be decreased for, by 25% for 30 seconds. And that is pretty brutal, to be honest, within a fight like this. But like I said, you will be 100% okay and will never see this ability if you're using tier 90 Dragos correctly. I have not tested tier 80 or below though. Now what makes Mammoth really interesting is that Jax have allowed us to stun the Mammoth, but the Mammoth's AI is capable of detecting that stun and then using the freedom ability, which we use, you know, quite often in many boss fights in this game, it uses the freedom ability to escape from that stun which we've inflicted upon it. It won't do it straight away, but whilst you're using destroy, for example, it will use freedom at some point within the animation. So long stuns are less effective against the Slayer creature. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the screen with some consistent kills in a row. I'm going to walk you through the strategy that I'm using here, and each kill can be very different, as the bar just seems to just be so random. So it's not like the Camel Warriors Guide, where I can just show you one kill, and it will be the exact same thing every single kill. Mammoths are quite random, uh, and each kill will be different. So the Power Slay method. Okay, so feel free to use the revolution bar that I have set up on the screen, which you'll notice I have key binded soul split to E and range prayer to R. And the casual method, I've key binded the melee prayer to E. So make use of your key binds when prayer flicking throughout these two methods. So the power slay method, you want to soul split at the start of the kill. You then want to charge with your drawling to use thresholds on your first kill, and then I'd recommend to use Zerk at the start of future kills. Uh, so then you can get through one and a half mammoths with Zerk activated, so that's really good. So try and use Zerk as much as you possibly can. Feel free to take a Vigor switch, a Ring of Vigor, if you want to put the extra effort in. So you'll be prayer flicking throughout the fight. Uh, you want to prayer flick to range protect when the mammoth uses its range attack. And you want to either tank that damage, or you can move, it's completely up to you. I just cho chose to tank it with this method. You can also use Devotion uh, to prevent any damage incoming from that range uh, damage as long as you're praying, protect range. Uh, and then you can just pr uh, prayer flick to melee prayer whilst that devotion is activated in between those attacks. Look out for the blue bar that can appear. This means the mammoth is preparing to charge. So it's absolutely adamant you have protect melee on and you have that proactivated to tank this damage. Otherwise, you know, you're going to die. Uh, well, that's pretty brutal, but you're going to have to tank a lot of damage. Uh, just concentrate on DPSing when the barge happens to get through the kill quickly, as it can still hit you if you try to outrun it or change, you know, run out of its path. Therefore, for me, it's not worth the loss in DPS to have to move. Just tank the damage with melee prey on or devotion, etc. and just DPS through that phase. This is a lot of effort, this strategy, um, because you're having to prayer flick a lot. And if you make one mistake due to having a lack or a backup of food within a yak for emergency heals, if you make one mistake, if you don't prayer melee when the mammoth uh, is preparing for a barge and it barges into you, which can hit up to 7k, you know, you're going to be using way too much food supplies here, emergency healing to survive. Therefore, you just have to be in full concentration mode if you are going to power slay through this. And that is pretty much the same for all the other high-level mobs, to be honest. Penasaur is an absolute must if you do want to use Zealots, but for me, it just isn't worth it. I prefer to use the Souls. With this method, you can switch to a shield as well for resonance heals, which I forgot to do here. Very easy to do as well here, as the range hits are large if you're not praying protect range. This will conserve food intake. Now let's go to the method which the majority of people will be using, and so will I, to be honest. This is the more casual method, the safer option. So you can just stay uh, melee praying, occasionally switching to soul split for threshold. So your main prayer is going to be melee here. So make sure you've got melee key binded to E or whatever you've got it key binded to on your action bar. So you can quickly flick to it. I then pray range when needed or simply move out of the way. Example, if you're midway through an assault ability, let's say, don't just move. Otherwise, you're going to cancel that assault. Just pray range and tank it. Again, you can use devotion or debilitate. You can easily soul split it back up. You could even put in the odd resonance heal like I said earlier, with a shield switch. Essentially, it's exactly the same as the other method, really. It's just it's the safer option because instead of taking an attacking combat familiar, you've got a yak there to back you up full of food. So you're still dealing a decent amount of damage, keep zerking when you can, and just DPS through the fight with the revolution bar on the screen, and you should be fine. What I really like about this Slayer creature is that it really makes you prayer flick. It gets you into that mentality and routine of prayer flicking to soul split when it's most needed and when you can take advantage of those big heals coming from your thresholds like destroy or assault and then you know prayer flicking to range and not moving because you know it's going to cancel that assault so it's all about 
getting into that mentality, getting into that mental state of prayer flicking. And I love that about this Slayer creature because it prepares a lot of people for high level PVM situations such as Araxor, uh, where you really need to prayer flick effectively in phase four. You know, it really gets you into that mentality. Prayer flicking is extremely useful at next solo in the shadow phase, for example. You can easily soul split a lot of damage there when you're next soloing with a Nihil. So this really gets you into that mentality of prayer flicking, and I think it's going to help a lot of people get into high level PVM. So I managed to get a heck of a lot of Mammoth Tusk. Most of these off stream, actually. I got three back to back, which was ridiculous. They are selling for 230k right now, and I've actually made around 2.6 million purely off Mammoth Tusk today within only like 200 kills or so, which is pretty damn good to be honest. Uh, anyone who tuned into my stream early on as well, you would have noticed I was kiting the mammoths, a method which was shortly hotfixed. And I'll get into this an in another video where I'll show you how easy kiting made this fight and explain what it means in the RPG world. Thank you for watching my Acheron Mammoths Guide. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe for future videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.